Now, hello everyone, and thank you very much for joining us for our webinar this afternoon. Um, we're just going to have a chat about everything that's happening in fabulous County Clare, and um, that our beautiful neighbour here. I'm in Limerick, so it's our beautiful neighbour. Um, and uh, my name is Claire Flynn, and I'm a development officer with Mental Health Ireland, and my region is Limerick, Clare, and uh, North Tipperary. So I have a great interest in learning a bit more about what is available to support our well-being in County Clare. Um, and we have some lovely panellists who are offering those services in the area and they will let us know a little bit about what they are doing. So if you have any questions, do please pop them into the chat. Um, the session is being recorded, but it isn't. You won't be recorded any attendees anyway, just the panellists uh, will be recorded. So you don't need to worry about that. Um, but do pop any questions into the chat uh, for any of us. Um, we'll have an opportunity to have a discussion later on. Everyone's just going to talk about what they're doing. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, the recording will be available later, but I'll go through all those other housekeeping bits later on. So for now, I'm just going to ask everybody to say hello. So Sharon, would you mind just introducing yourself and saying where you're from, please? Hi, everybody. My name is Sharon Maxwell, and I am an administrator with Ennis Mental Health Association. It's lovely to be here. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. And thank you so much for agreeing to be here. Um, James, can I ask you to introduce yourself and say where you're from, please? Thanks, Claire. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. James Kennedy is my name, and I work for West Clare Mental Health Association in Toulouse. Thanks, James, and thank you for agreeing to be here as well. Mary, can I ask you to introduce yourself and say? Yeah, I'm uh, Mary O'Donoghue, and I work in the West Clare Family Resource Centre, and um, I suppose representing all the family resource centres here today in the county. Lovely. Thank you, Mary. Great to have you here. Thank you so much. And Mike, we all know Mike. Yeah, <laughs> from the webinar. Suppose, uh, How are you? I get sucked into these on a regular <laughs> basis, but always glad to do it. They're a great opportunity, um, you know, to have these conversations, but also share the knowledge. And I think this will be particularly useful, uh, you know, for people to network and people throughout the county and wider to get an understanding of what's going on at the moment as well. Um, so, yeah, I'm manager with Midwest Aries and sure, we'll talk about that later. Thanks, Leo. OK, that's perfect. Thank you so much, Mike. Great. We'll get started. So um, and I think what we're going to do is just discuss with each of you, you know, where, where you are and what you do and what you offer, um, which will be lovely for people to learn about. So, James, if I can start with yourself, maybe could you tell us a little bit about where you work and what you offer there in West Clare? Claire, I'll just try and share a screen with everyone now. Yeah, absolutely. And let's see. Well, so uh, West Clare Mental Health Association. Uh, basically, I work in the Lighthouse, which is their peer support project. And that's based in Kilrush. It's on Lion Killen Road in Kilrush. And I suppose a little bit about West Clare Mental Health Association. Uh, it was established in 1975 by a group of local volunteers. And the aim of the association is to support people with mental health difficulties and promote positive mental health in the drug community across there. So the Lighthouse is uh, it's, it's a peer support project. And what, what does that mean, I suppose? People, you know, some people don't understand it. So I suppose, in brief, who is the Lighthouse for? The short answer is the Lighthouse is open to everyone but also including people uh, who want to support themselves or their family members or supporters. And I suppose, what does that support look like? And it's the peer support model is where you get help and support that people who've been through similar experiences can share and give to each other. So that's kind of the essence of the peer support model that we have in the White House. Currently, uh, our groups meet every Tuesday and every Friday evening from seven to nine. And uh, what can you expect if you come to one of these groups? Uh, I suppose off the bat, look, it's it's a safe space for people to come and talk about what's gone on in their life that week, uh, where they're currently at, uh, with their feelings and their emotions. And there's always plenty of tea in the building, so. It's basically a place where people come in, drop in, have a cup of tea and a chat, speak to people and with similar life experiences. A place where people can learn from each other. 
So uh, one of the most formal cited services that we provide at the lighthouse, we provide peer support for individuals if one of one the people. So we would link people in uh, maybe if someone has suffered with anxiety or depression or addiction, we would link them in with a peer in the centre uh, who would have similar life experiences. But then we would have a uh, peer support for groups that would be the group setting uh, the people basically we'd gather around the table and we'd check in with everyone and have a cup of tea and just let, let the conversations flow. And on top of that, then it was uh, I won't delve too much into my there, but uh, we would have Midwest areas would come in uh, periodically and uh, run courses for most recently what we doing a resilience workshop. Uh, we would also provide training for RAP, which is the Wellness Recovery Action Plan. And we would hope this year that we'd be running a number of courses throughout the country. We also provide uh, training around Safe Talk and Living Work Start. And starting actually next month, we're going out into the communities of West Clare on Monday evenings to hold uh, basically a well being information evening uh, around what supports are in the lighthouse and uh, information around suicide awareness and suicide. Uh, and it's training that can be provided through the lighthouse or, or through the individual communities. So, and what I'm going to is the brochure there. That kind of is the brochure in its essence. And uh, so we're online to enroll into the Rush County Clare. Uh, mobile number is 085-855-9511. Uh, online 065-906-2329. Email address is there. It's a bit of a mouthful. West Clare and HA at mentalhealthireland.ie. We're also on Facebook on the Lighthouse page, and our website is live at westclarementalhealth.ie. I suppose on top of that's kind of internally in the Lighthouse, and then externally from the Lighthouse, we would have a horticultural garden project uh, that's currently in development, and I know most people have. A uh, number of plants in it and a reflective seating area that will give people the opportunity during, you know, when the weather and breeze and we get over these storms, uh, to come up and engage in some activities outside and to be able to sit down and soak up everything that nature has. And there's a lot of nature in to us, it's a beautiful, beautiful little, little town. Uh, so it's just another add on to the centre as we, as we develop it. Uh, I, I think that's everything. Do you have any questions for me? That's fabulous. Um, so much there. And um, it's lovely to hear about the garden. And as you said, I mean, it's spring. You know, well, we're coming into springtime now, even though we've just been through quite a few storms. But hopefully that's the end of them for a long while. Um, and, you know, I think we're all looking forward to longer evenings, maybe hopefully brighter days, hopefully a lot more sunshine, you know, and being able to get out and about and enjoy gardens and, and nature and everything else. James, that's fabulous. Thank you very much for sharing that. And I, just to say to uh, everybody attending that the information that's shared, like, like the brochure that James has just shared there, we will be sending them out to everybody who signed up to attend as well. So, you know, you don't need to try to scribble down notes or anything else. We will be sending these out to you. Um, James, if you would mind just stop sharing there for a moment, if that's OK, so that's great. Thanks so much, James. And I also do want to mention that Mental Health Ireland is a national organisation, but we are supported by quite a few grassroots, which are our mental health associations. Um, and there are three actually in County Clare, uh, West Clare, which James is representing there and spoke about there. Um, and next then is Sharon from Ennis Mental Health Association, another one of our associations um, who provides a service in County Clare as well. Hi, Sharon. How are you? Hi, Clare. Um, tell us a bit more about Ennis Mental Health Association. OK, well, I'm going to share my screen as well. I will be very quick here. Just bear with me for one second. Okay, so um, hi everybody. As I said earlier on, my name is Sharon and I am with Ennis Mental Health Association. Um, Ennis Mental Health Association is a voluntary community organization and it's a registered charity. And the guys, the team have been together for over 30 years. I actually only came on board a couple of years ago, but over the 30 years, the team have consistently focused attention on mental health issues and on the promotion of positive mental health in the town of Ennis and in its environs. So what we very much focus on is lectures, educational programs, workshops and community events to groups originally in person, but since uh, the last couple of years, uh, most of what we have done is transitioned to online. Um, 
we host Ennis Mental Health Week in October of every year. And this year gone past, we operated a hybrid model. So all of our indoor events, we also live streamed on our Facebook page to reach as wide an audience as we possibly could. The panel here were talking just before we went live on this webinar about how online events have helped us to reach a wider audience. And we certainly found that, that we've reached an awful lot more people with our online program. And I'll just go through in a few moments what we've done and you know what, what we hope to do this year. Um, in terms of persons who are in recovery, we are very much focused and dedicated to, to helping people in recovery. But because we are not um, service providers, we're not best position to do that directly ourselves. So we work in partnership with statutory bodies to offer appropriate support to persons who are in recovery. Um, as Claire mentioned, we are part of Mental Health Ireland and we are fully aligned to the strategic ambitions of Mental Health Ireland and we are supported ably and generously by Claire, who is our development officer. We are an open, an organization is open to all groups. So we have worked with Claire Youth Service uh, for events in the past. We also have an event next month uh, for um, age friendly Ennis um, and, and pretty much everything in between. Um, we're very much a collaborative organization. We've built strong relationships with, with HSC, with the County Council. We have a project coming up hopefully in this spring with Clare County Council on our peace of mind booklet, which I'll touch on again in a moment. As I say, we've worked with Clare Youth Service, Clare Sports Partnership, we're our brilliant partner to us for our Mental Health Week outdoor events. And we are hoping to work with them much more closely this spring on the Woodlands for Health um, campaign. We've also, Clare Library Service have been brilliant offering us space for pop-up stands for things like Sea Change um, campaign worked with Health Clare and with Ennis Lions Club. Um, I mentioned Woodlands for Health. This will be taking place in spring of this year. Um, and also the national um, Hello, How Are You campaign for Mental Health Ireland. So we're going to be working on both of those. Um, a lot of what we would do is very much focused on our online offerings, as I said, and our website, um, which is kind of trips off the tongue, as James mentioned for their email address is nsmha.com. Our email address is a lot more complicated, but on that website, you will find details of everything that we have done from our Mental Health Week events to talks that we have held and that we have done. We also have a recording on our website of a talk that we held recently um, by Dr. Tony Bates, The Five Ways to Wellbeing. And there's a huge variety. We try to hit the different areas of physical, um, nutrition, um, life experience, um, everything to try and, and come at positive mental health from, from all angles, really. Um, there's quite a lot of information on our website um, that you can, can take a look through. But one of the pieces that the organization um, are very proud of is their peace of mind booklet that the guys produced in 2017 in collaboration with um, a number of other organizations. So we have digitized uh, the peace of mind booklet on our website. And the hope was and still is that we will be able to um, produce this as an app that everyone can have in their pocket so they can have some information at their fingertips. But for now, it is on our website. And if you click into each area on the Peace of Mind booklet, we will it will give you links to where you can go to find a little bit more information. So we are, we are very focused on signposting people where we can't help directly. We will signpost to where um, you can get best get help um, and the resources that are available to you. Um, I think that's probably where I'm going to finish up, Claire, if that's okay. Our social media links um, are available on our website as well. Um, and as I say, if we're not offering the service ourselves, we will signpost to where you can find the help. Perfect. That sounds amazing. And um, and yeah, I like that, uh, like Mental Health Ireland has been around for 50 something years as well. And quite a few of the mental health associations have been around for almost as long. So, you know, pr providing that's our support over a long period of time, which is amazing. And um, thanks for that, Sharon. Um, and again, I'll just tell everybody that the document that Sharon was referring to there that will be available online and also th the link then to the NS Mental Health Association website will be there as well. Thank you so much, Sharon. Um, so Mary, the Family Resource Centres um, throughout the country offer so many great supports and services to their local community. So would you mind telling us about what um, 
the many uh, primary resource centres in County Clare and what they offer, please. I suppose, and thank you for having me here today. today. Um, I suppose the first thing to say is that there are four family resource centres in the county. Um, I'm based, we're based here now in Kilrush. We cover West Clare. There's a family resource centre in Ennis Diamond in the, in the town, um, and that covers North Clare. Then there is one in Shannon, which is in the Respond housing estate there in, in Shannon Town. And then you have uh, the family resource centre, which is Killaloo Balana. So we're sharing a family resource centre with TIP. It's about the only thing we might share with them. But anyway, um, so with the four family resource centres, in many ways, we have a lot in common. And then there are some differences, obviously, because we're all community based um, organisations. And what we do is we work to meet the needs of our local communities. So the needs in every community, you know, there's a lot, as I said, a lot of similarities, but there are some differences as well. Um, and rather than going through absolutely everything that we do, I think today we can look at what we do around mental well-being. And we see men mental well-being as, as a core to the work that we do, uh, both in terms of the individual and in terms of communities. Because if an individual isn't feeling well or, you know, then it's hard to participate. And then obviously, you know, there's such a thing as community well-being as well. You know, if something hits a community, you know, different things affect various areas, etc. And we'd, we'd be mindful of that. Um, so what we do is we offer quite a wide variety, I suppose, of activities and resources. And a bit like what Sharon would have said there, um, we signpost as well. Because so if we don't know what to do, we also we know people who, who know what to do. So I think, you know, there's always that element that nothing, nothing is too much. We can find a response or an answer and help people to find the best resource and the best support that they can get for whatever issue. So we'd always say to, and I, I can speak safely on behalf of all four FRCs, come knock on the door and talk to us and then we'll support yourself or you know, somebody else will. We work closely as well with, with James there in the Lighthouse in Kilrush, which is a fantastic resource, new resource that's here in West Clare. Um, so there's a lot of different things. We can do family support programmes. For example, a lot of parents might have difficulties, you know, working with children and building family relationships and relationships between children and parents through our Parents Plus programmes, our Strengthening Families programmes, etc. We also offer counselling. And we, I suppose our goal always was, and we've been doing this for the last, I suppose, 20 years, is that we offer affordable and accessible counselling and play therapy in, in our centres. Um, and uh, that's, a, a, I suppose, a vital and a very um, much needed resource. Um, we then offer quite a, other types of resources for, you know, if family, if a person themselves or a family member is you know has addiction issues be it alcohol drugs whichever there's supports that are there for both the person who is um who, who's using themselves or also their family members and we also have that in terms of you know for families maybe with children that are under 18 and for adults um other types of supports that we offer would be a lot of well-being and personal development courses and we're working at the moment uh with uh ship which is that cork the Cork crowd, as we call them. No, but they started out in Cork, the so, um, social health and education program. And uh, at the moment, uh, our next course we're going to deliver is around building um, better relationships. And they're great and they have excellent facilitators that come in as well. Um, and then we do our own well-being courses. We do crafts. We do, you know, a lot of social groups as well, which in themselves, not only can you learn a new skill, but you get to meet other people. And at the moment, we're doing those in small groups, obviously mindful of health and safety ongoing. But we're bringing people back slowly but surely. Um, there are other places, like I know, for example, in Simon, they have their community garden. There's a community garden in Kilrush as well. And I'd say in other areas, and that I would always say to people, you know, those are the kind of things. There's a lot out in our communities that we mightn't know about. And sometimes just looking at the parish notes or the Clare Champion or, you know, it's a great way of finding out what's happening locally. Um, and then I suppose the other things that we do is, is uh, we offer a space for people to come and volunteer with us. 
you know, and sometimes we might just like to get out of the house for an hour or for a couple of hours. Um, and we're here to support that as well. Um, and I think that that is something that that's that's uh, all FRCs do as well. Um, a new initiative we have, and we're in the process actually of recruiting, um, is a, gam a gambling addiction counsellor that will focus specifically on people, say, who have uh, um, addiction to gambling. And that's a new initiative that we're doing between all the four FRCs as well. Um, so, I, I mean, I suppose it's quite difficult to say what everybody is doing. And that's a small snapshot of what we do within our centres. But we can, like, as I said, there's so there's a, a family resource centre in Ennis Diamond, Shannon, Kililubalala, and uh, here in Kilrush. And uh, just really contact us, really, is what we would say. I was and, just uh, say, yeah. Yeah, it's the main thing. I don't have the numbers on hand, but they're very easy. You can send them got. out later, Mary. Don't worry. They're about very easily got. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and most important, again, is that. Like all of our all of our teams um, in in all of the the family resource centres, we do all of constantly do training in terms of of um, safe talk, um, mm -hmm. you know, a whole range of different types of training as well, um, mm -hmm. and everybody everybody is welcome, um, and it's very very non judgmental and a very safe place to come. I think that's, that's the yeah. the best thing I could say about our resource centres. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, they are a fantastic resource, uh, you know, they're aptly titled, but the, the, the wraparound of, of the family, you know what I mean, is something that always speaks to me about the Family Resource Centre, so many services, yeah. um, particularly around mental health and wellbeing, can tend to be targeted to over 18s only, um, you know, because under 18s and, and people who are younger require much more specialised service, so to have a, for a family to have access to other supports as well, um, and that personal development and, and being part of groups and things like that, all forms part of our mental health and our well-being and to help us to keep us um you know keep moving doesn't it and keep connected and all those lovely yeah. things that really do support positive well-being so yeah. thank you mary for that You're snapshot welcome. thank you so much and i know it was a snapshot because i know how much you all do <laughs> otherwise um, it keep you for the day <laughs> yeah <laughs> really and again we'll send out information and i'd be missed to like north clare mental health association and they're not represented here today but they are another mental health association and they work very closely with North Clare and Family Resource Centre. And I know that they support them in terms of being able to provide counselling to the community, uh, low cost counselling to the community there. So, and I, which I know is available through all the, the resource centres, but I just want to particularly highlight North Clare Mental Health Association because of the support they give there as well. And um, thank you so much for that, Mary. Mike O'Neill, I mean, you have to tell us all about what Midwest Aries has coming up because you always have such a fantastic calendar of events and so yeah. varied as well around well-being. So. Yeah, and, and I suppose that's, and I'll explain that, and I suppose I'm just I, listening to the other um, people here today, and it's just kind of, when we look at well-being, like, and these are just brilliant examples of either different activities, different engagement, peer support, social connection, going for a walk in the woods, or, you know, or what, what we would do, recovery education. So there's lots of ways of learning, and this is the beauty of well-being. We can learn it you know so there's options and choice out there Absolutely. and i think because like so, some people might prefer you, you know going for a walk other people might prefer cycling a bike so i kind of so it's so once we're you know having that choice around managing our well-being is to be able to identify stuff or maybe through the shared learning then um mm -hmm. you know what works for us as individuals because we're not all the same and um you know and so this is only a snapshot of some of the stuff and i think as mary said and, and again sharon as well is that signposting piece that can go on as well so yeah. i suppose but the first thing i would say to anyone is just reach out and ask you know because if we don't provide it chances are somebody else will you, you know so um you know and it's the importance of just managing our well-being and that kind of fits with us and that's our i suppose our title here and um, so I, I'm not sharing slides or anything. So but Margaret, again, in the follow up email, when you will get the different resources and we'll email out our timetable as well in that um, as well. So um, recovery education, it looks at managing well-being and, uh, and also mental health recovery. So there's two pieces to it um, as regards our work streams. And we work. We provide at the moment, like everybody, we had to transition online and, um, you know, and I can't wait to get back out into the community and reconnecting with the people who need it on the ground, because not everybody has transitioned online. So 
So I think going forward for all of us, it will be that hybrid model. And, um, you know, so to ensure that nobody gets left behind. Uh, and I think even before we came on, as that example of even for somebody, you know, suffering from social anxiety, that they can come to a workshop online where they don't actually have to go. So again, it's to, it's to get that, le you know, shared learning in the room, even if it's online, and that could help, you know, improve somebody's well-being, build their knowledge, build their skills, build their capacity. And, um, you know, so recovery education. So when we think of education, I suppose, in general, we look at, well, there's primary school, there's secondary school, there's third level, there's adult education, and we're what's called recovery education. So there's a number of features in that, I suppose, that makes us that little bit different. So why and what do we do and what is different in that? So all of our workshops are co-produced and it would be like so if we decided to create like the discussion here today, let's create a recovery education module on well-being. So there's an example of community partners here, you know, who may wish to come to that. We may have people who use the services. We have staff then who come along who uh, work in the HSE mental health services, and then people who work community partnerships, family members as well, and friends. So basically, it, if you go through that list, it's everybody. And so in that, it's that process of co-production as we ask people. And then that informs what should be in that workshop, what should it look like and how would we do it? And that's co-production. So, and it's based on equality, but it's also, I suppose, a cycle of evaluation, you know, at the end of it. So we come back to, it's not just the start piece, you know, so we co-deliver and then, you know, take the feedback, co-evaluate co it then from the feedback and chop it and change it and evolve it as needs fit. Um, we do use, an adult learning approach. And uh, because again, people, it's self-directed, people choose to attend. So there's nobody forced to attend. And um, so again, and in that, so what happens in, the, in a workshop is our facilitators um, will ask questions. And this is where, and they will also maybe share some of their own personal recovery journey. And this is the beauty of it. And that's called the value of uh, the, the values, the principle of lived experience. So while yes, for many people and myself included who have used the mental health services over many years who had struggles and challenge, it's not a therapeutic space where people come and share. It is to acknowledge the fact that people have had difficult, um, I suppose, uh, experiences in their life and maybe still having them. But we focus on what works. What do you do? You know, so we ask those type of questions and that's it. So that becomes then the shared learning in the room because it comes across so often that, you know, people say, God, I never tried that before. I never heard of that before. So it's the shared learning where people can say, well, here's what I do. You know, so again, that example of the, the woodland walks, which will be coming up uh, back in the springtime, as I mentioned earlier, as an activity. But whereas we will get into that, not just like, well, go for a walk in the woods. You know, but we get getting a little bit deeper. It's kind of like, well, why? You know, you're connecting with yourself, time out, connecting with nature, you know, appreciating the beauty of it and all of that. So when you become aware of the reasons why people say get active, so what would I want to do with that? For? But if you can get into the rationale of why we do certain things, it can enhance our well-being. You know, so another component of the six components. So again, I'll get through these. So it's experiential. So that's where we say you take the learning and you apply it in practice, you know. So and that could be for many of us. So we would have some difficult, I suppose, topics as well in our in our workshops as well and challenging work or people may be in different, you know, stages or places in the recovery. So it's not saying it's easy because again, if well-being and recovery and mental health, you know, if it was that easy, we wouldn't be here today. So for many people, this is a long and enduring process, you know, and there's lots of reasons in that as well, you know, and whereas James there talks about peer support, where in our workshops, just by being present, it is not peer support, but it facilitates peer support where people can feel connected to other people in the room. There's that social connection, even if it's online, but there's that shared understanding and that people can feel, yeah, I am not alone here. And that comes across all of the time in our workshops where people will, 
you know, when, when people share the learning and the knowledge and what works. So again, it does facilitate peer support, but we're different from peer support. And then, and the obvious thing is it increases recovery knowledge and service capacity. So it is about building skills and shared understanding and, um, you know, where people can use the knowledge that is there. And I would always say, like, I would have used the mental health services for many years. And unfortunately, I was there pre, there's a model of recovery, um, you know, that we use is called CHIME, you know, Connection, Hope, um, Identity, Meaning and Empowerment. And if that was there when I would have been very unwell and a staff member sat down and said, look, here's the personal stuff. If you could work on this, it really, because I sit here now and say, this is the stuff that actually works. And it would have, you know, speeded up my, it would have clipped a couple of years off and no bother, you know, because I had to figure all of this stuff out. But when we look about personal development, you know, who do I want to be? What's my life like, you know? Uh, what's my future going to be like? Like, you know, some people, when they have a diagnosis, it can be devastating. And, um, you know, so, so there's a lot to it. And I suppose we work, we work twice a week in each of the two acute units. We're out in Ennis. And we're here, and I say we hope to be back, and we will be back. It was across Ennis, and we've already been back before Christmas. We linked in with the lighthouse there with James, and uh, but again to get out to uh, and a part of it, we're we're already networking here uh, as well, you know. So about joining the dots uh, and to, to get that done. So uh, we also do staff staff training here, which is quite interesting as well. And it's about I suppose the, the, there is a national framework for recovery and mental health, which also looks at shifting from the old um, clinical model as it was uh, into a person-centered recovery focused model of care and other ways. that's why peer support exists you know yeah. so there's other stuff there that's happening and there's change taking place um i know I'm, I'm i'm banging on a bit here now no so no no, no but the thing is that any one of our panelists today we could probably spend an hour talking about what yeah. the offering is i mean this yeah. really is just a snapshot snapshot but, yeah and you know, great. in terms of, yeah, I mean, you know, in terms of the offerings that is there, and I suppose we should say as well that Midwest Aries, like if you're a community organization and you feel you'd like to invite them out, I'm pretty sure they'd be happy to come out uh, to Absolutely. take it for invitation and come out. Yes, you know? we're, we're always looking for organizations, FRCs, you know, community development groups to partner with so we can join the dots because they have the in and the understanding and uh, of their yeah. community and we can come in and um provide something for them. So again, if anybody is looking in or looking in at the recording later, get in touch. And, yeah. Um, yeah, we'll get out. And we'll send out the details again later. Yeah. Thanks so much Brilliant. for that, Mike. Thanks, Claire. You're chatting there about um, physical activity and getting out into woods. Just a lovely segue into James Murray, who's here from Clare Sports Partnership. And James, my apologies, I didn't see you in there. And so I was late inviting you in. My, that was my fault. And I had said, to the panelists, probably. I said something's going to go wrong. So, but even if it does, so what? You know. But you're here now, so very welcome. <laughs> thanks a so, million, and um, thanks a million, Claire. So, tell us a bit about Claire Sports Partnership, and we all know at this stage how. I mean, I think what well, I think we all know, or we all have an understanding of. We've been told that physical activity is so good for not just our physical well-being, but also our mental well-being as well. Um, I suppose uh, very much so, Claire. I suppose just, um, I suppose where we what we you know what we do um our our mission is to increase physical activity and sport amongst the the uh, the general population of all ages and to try and get to enjoy physical activity and sport and we would see ourselves as a facilitation organization where we have where we try and get everybody in in, in physical activity and sport but we have six primary target groups which are women in sport older adults people with disabilities um school going children the unemployed disadvantaged youths and immigrant um, communities um so doctors here that work in those areas and it was just that it, it's great to see mary from the western family resource center as a panelist um work um so working with the family resource center we they they work with adults in west clare um so they might look for potential physical activity opportunities for the older adults and that could be around yoga classes 
games. It could be a walking group. Um, it could be anything to do with physical activity. So where we come in is potentially providing tutors or providing um, um, information around how they can go around or how, how they can go about setting up their group. Um, and again, I, I suppose also from the, and I, I like using the phrase, money makes the world go around. And a lot of, a lot of organizations need grants and, you know, programs so i um, i suppose for us we would be that organ that middle person where we can point people um to national grants but also we you know we do give out smaller grants ourselves around you know around running these the follow on from that around the area of mental health is to for us to be able to facilitate as i said we were we're a facilitation organization that's the way i would see us that we would lead around that woodlands for health and you know mentioned it earlier we would lead a walk um you know um every year for, for health association um and that's an easy starting point for people that do have issues around mental health you know from a physical activity perspective getting out and walking it's, it's that very basic very basic um physical activity and um, we don't say that we're we're experts or that we prescribe um you know, exercise if um the with the woodlands for health and uh, um i i know we had a meeting there a, a few weeks ago what we would like to see that on the premise couch to 5k and that's a bit it's a very statement. so people are sitting on the couch and it doesn't really matter you know what your issues might be but that you're sitting on the couch and you want to get to walk a 5k or you want to get to run a 5k that we can provide um, that facilitation medium where over the course of a 10, 12 week period that you can achieve your own goals as an individual and say, well, do you know what? Now I'm going to 5K or if you want to, for the real challenge of, I want to run a 5 a couch potato for the want of a better phrase. Um, so that's kind of us, uh, um, I suppose, kind of maybe from a questions perspective, you know, for, we'll say people out there, if they have any questions, yeah, for clear. And listen, you were breaking up. We could hear most of what you were saying, James, where you're just a little bit coming in now. But listen, clear sport, like the sports partnerships are such an amazing addition to community work in every county. Um, and I know the clear sports partnership is no different. And like a few of us now have talked about uh, the Woodlands for Health, and I'll just explain to, uh, to attendees what that is about. So it's a, a, a partnership between Mental Health Ireland, Creelcha, and Get Ireland Walking. Um, and what it is, is literally getting out into Woodlands because the evidence shows that how beneficial it is for our health, not just our physical health, but our mental health as well. As Mike was saying, being out in nature, like a walk is great in, in every sort of way, but when we add in and the nature aspect to it, it really just enhances the benefits. Um, and then, you know, it is targeted at people who are accessing mental health services. So it gives them an opportunity, as James was saying, to, um, you know, to to maybe join a group, to go out and feel safer, maybe going out and join with a group for the first time. Um, it also gives access to a bit of transport so that they can access the woodlands, you know, because it, it, accessibility can be an issue sometimes, definitely for people. Um, and that's definitely one of the ways that um, Mental Health Ireland and other organisations and the local mental health associations, family resource centres and the sports partnerships all try to include as many people as possible. Um, I mean, there's so much going on. And one of the reasons of that Midwest areas and ourselves wanted to do one around what is happening in County Clare is because quite often maybe people don't realise how much can be available in their area, um, you know, in terms of looking after their own well-being, that people do have a lot of power themselves in terms of, you know, what, what, what they can access and how they can support themselves and get support where they need it. Um, you know, and as everybody has said here, it's not that everybody here has all the answers or maybe has all the necessary supports, but they definitely would be able to signpost people to what would be needed. Um, so thanks very much, everybody. There was a question came in there just about, you know, that the we had talked about it before we just went live about how, you know, this like uh, online had given access to so many people that maybe might not have been able to access supports previously because they're in person. But you know, it did also highlight the digital poverty that can be experienced by people. Um, and just does anybody have a, a, any comments or thoughts on that? Yeah, and I suppose for our bookings on that, we would have experienced that because I suppose I'm the only link in Aries back to pre-COVID. 
And I would see, while well, yes, it's wonderful, it creates access and we can open up to a new audience and overcome barriers. A lot of tra the traditional people who attended our service come to our workshops did not transition. So that is a priority now as we're emerging from lockdown to, to get back. So on all our promotional material out there by word of mouth or otherwise. So we take bookings over the phone by email or also clicking on Eventbrite. But yes, there is, to use that phrase, a digital poverty out there. So I think it's really important that, you, you know, face to face, get back out, connecting. And um, it is it is the way to do it, but definitely the hybrid model. Yeah definitely. yeah, definitely. Mary, you had to. I do. I actually, I think, I mean, it's a point very, very well made and really hit, I suppose, everybody two years ago, particularly in the first, dare I say it, long, lockdown, or as I say, BC now before COVID, isn't it? <laughs> um, and then <laughs> we're now after COVID. But um, it was very much highlighted. Now, I know we do it in West Clare, and I think um, North Clare do it as well during throughout COVID, and I'd say even there might be some left over, we would have um, sought, I suppose, funding so that we could actually give tablets and phones, smartphones to people. Um, we did a good bit of that actually over the last two years. And then we developed training packages, which we could do, um, would you believe it, over the phone? And also, we, we, you know, we posted out to people and we talked people through everything about how to get online, how to, and if we were giving a tablet, we always made sure, and the phone, we made sure Zoom was downloaded already, you know, so there was quite a lot of, of, of getting people online. Yeah, so, now, yeah. I think that will stay and I think it's a very useful resource because yeah. not everybody is able to come out just yet. Um, and yeah. But there are grants and there are probably other organizations out there who have access maybe to technology that we can get to people as well. Um, yeah. And I think um, because, yes, there's a lot of people that were, were reluctant. No, there's a lot of people reluctant. But we, I mean, when, when, when you have a 90 year old woman who actually went on a smartphone and joined Zoom, sit fit, like you're, you know, you're doing yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's, it's, it's there to be used. Um, it, it does allow you the, doing, uh, doing things in the comfort of your home as well, which is good for a while. And yeah. I think especially coming out of COVID, there's a lot of people with a lot of anxiety for all different reasons who are reluctant to come back into a group setting as well. I would safely say, and I'd say all people that are here as well, we're all following very strict, I suppose, health and safety measures. And like, for example, we're going to do that definitely up until Easter um, and to make sure, I suppose, keeping people safe, well and healthy is a priority and it's an ongoing priority. Yeah. But there and probably I, is some tablets and phones going around still. And I people. think as well, Mary, like I don't think any organisation would mind if someone rang up and asked, like, are you going to kind of keep going with protocols and what are you going to do? You know, I'm pretty sure anyone, any organisation would be happy to answer that question to allay anybody's fears if they had a fear about coming back in person. Sharon, you want to come in there? Yeah, actually, Mary covered what I was going to say as I was going through it there. We, at, at the start of COVID as well, when everyone was scrambling, we, again, like I mentioned earlier on, because we don't deal directly as service providers, we actually worked with the statutory bodies to, to donate tablets as well to just to increase accessibility. But we did discover that we, while it allowed us to reach a wider audience, we also wanted to get back to in person as much as possible. So all of our October events, I don't know, did I mention when I was speaking earlier on, we actually streamed them live on our Facebook page as well, because sometimes we felt Zoom might be a little complicated for people or whatever. So we figured yeah. Facebook was a more accessible way. And um, so I think we will go down that hybrid route in future for all future events that it would be um, Facebook that would be easier yeah. to live stream as well as in person. But yeah, the digital poverty, we've we've had lots of head scratching on that to see. And we, we haven't come up with a solution. I, yeah. I wish we could, but we, we couldn't. I know because even it's not just like sometimes it's not just the accessibility to tablets or the device sometimes it's the accessibility to the internet or the broadband you know and exactly and I know the yeah. national broadband has been rolled out but that is going to take time you know so yeah huge that issue. to it as well and you know it's just like oh what can you do when you continue to speak to your elected representatives do you know about that that's you know that's out of any of the people here that's out of our hands 
But I do know as well that in County Clare, particularly for um, older people, that Clare County Council had a grant as well where they were supporting older people to get devices. Um, and, you know, and I think if anybody is dealing with anything like that to, you know, to contact an organisation like a resource centre or something like that, you know, or one of the mental health Or the libraries, sorry. Or I the li say the I'm just going to say the libraries. The libraries yeah. are amazing and that you can use stuff there, but they can also maybe put you in touch with somebody, you know. Um, there, you know, there's always signposting as well that if the library can support you, they may very well know somebody who can, but it is an issue. Um, thanks everybody for that. Another question there that came in was, you know, for for people who are new to the parish, which are our new migrant and immigrant communities, um, you know, but they are part of our parish and they are part of our communities, but English may not necessarily be their first language. So, you know, are there supports out there um, or any particular workshops maybe to gear towards them? Or is it just that the workshops that are already going on can be can be accessible to them? James, do you want to come in there? You're on mute. Um, oh, yeah, there you go. Um, uh, sorry, Claire. Just in response to a question um, that came in in the chat, just around the different groups that we do work with. Um, yeah, the LGBTQ, um, I, I, I suppose, um, uh, TAR group. Um, but again, I suppose, as... Um, the tar group start to grow and um, to I suppose find um, our feet ourselves and how we down those barriers and work those groups and I suppose having developed be it nationally or regionally within those um, target groups and minority groups it, it, it makes it easier for us you know to, um, to reach them so I suppose just in, in relation to the um, LGBTQ um, we are working um, with um, Karina Murray just on a on a program where we're hoping to do a physical activity and sports day for teenagers um, that are within that yeah. part of that cohort. So, like whatever comes across, even yes, we have six primary target groups, or whatever comes across our table, we will try and work with you know as best we can within our own resources. Yes. Perfect. I understand. Thanks, James. Yeah, because because like while we want, you know, I know I definitely want a society anyway where wherever we end up, it's not a case of that. You know, we need to have specialized groups that everybody will just be welcome everywhere. You know, because but like it's it's it, we're working, we're getting there. We're not there yet. But and um, Mike, you had a query there. You want to? Yeah, and I suppose just on that, when we look at minority groups, I have an Excel sheet here and work with lists of individual requests. But unfortunately, you know, we, we also have to have the resources to be able to do that, you, you know, so we can. So anytime I get those requests from individual groups, I re my response is when we're running something in the community, we're an open and inclusive service. Everybody yeah. is welcome, you, you know, so. Um, and that's not saying when we're back in the community again, we would have been in list down Berna before, but there is immigrant populations, there is direct provision, you, you know, so again, if that can be, if they can be facilitated to attend um, the workshops that would be in that community, but uh, I suppose basically what I'm saying, our workshops are open. We can't. We, we just don't have the resources to, to go to targets because other other than that, the wider audience would be excluded. So yeah. it's better for us to be overall. We're just inclusive. So yes. if all in. That's it. We make perfect. Good, you know. Thanks, Mike. Mary. I just and, and I I think first and foremost, I think obviously when English is not a first language, it can be quite hard to participate in recognizing that in groups, et cetera. I think mean, one of the things, one, one resource that's out there is MyMind.ie, which is a, a national program. They actually have counselors who provide counseling in many different uh, languages. Um, and it's a great resource, even though it's online, it's not necessarily through our, our, our own organizations, but it is something that is there for people who may require, say specifically, maybe counseling um, when English is not your first language. There are quite a number of organizations that provide English classes and obviously try to make um, most uh, activities, I suppose, again, more friendly in, in terms of, 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 of ensuring people can join. I think from an LGBTQ uh, perspective, there is a new organization that has just started up in the last year, Queer Claire, and uh, they have a Facebook page and they will act, they are actually actively you know, working with people and I do believe as well that, um, 
You know, we all have a responsibility to ensure our own organisations. We think we're all equal. We treat everyone equally, but I suppose it's something like we all do on a regular basis. I know the FRC is like we're just after completing actually training, uh, LGBT uh, training for all members of the team and the staff, etc. And um, again, you know, can provide um, yeah. different types of resources and supports. We know there's an awful lot more of this, is, for example, in Limerick. And um, what it is yeah. now is making sure that there is spaces and places within County Clare, where pe all people feel welcome coming. And also given the opportunity then to actually discuss maybe issues that are pertinent to that particular community as well as important. Yeah. So those kind and of spaces can be created yes. if they're not there. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know that the Clare Youth Service would definitely be a very friendly space as well. Um, and just in like, there is Clare Immigrant Support Centre there in Ennis County Clare, and they have a website and that as well for anyone from the immigrant and migrant community. And Doris is in Limerick as well. Um, you know, so there are supports there where people can access English language classes usually as well, um, you know, to support people to learn English so that they can access other supports as well. Um, and the sports you mentioned as well, Mary. But guys, that's practically nearly everything we have time for. It's um, 10 to 3 now already. I mean, it's after actually flying through. Um, and I think that was a great snapshot of um, what's going on in County Clare in terms of supports for the well-being, um, whether it be through physical activity or counselling or attending groups or learning a new activity or finding out about my recovery or how I can support someone else in their recovery. Between the between the six of you here today have definitely shown that there is quite a lot available. Um, I did just want to mention as well that there is Healthy Clare through the Limerick, or sorry, Limerick, through Clare County Council, um, and they offer a lot of services and uh, supports as well, and they're accessible through the uh, Clare County Council website. And of course, then all uh, the libraries within County Clare are a great resource as well, great for signposting. And I mean, libraries, you know, both like everything that's been offered to you here today for anybody listening is free, you know, so which is a very, very important point to make. And as well as that, then if anybody listening is interested in getting involved, not just as an attendee, but maybe as a volunteer or a supporter, contact any of the organisations. If you're in their area, they would love to hear from you. I know they would. Um, yeah, you know, um, and if you have an idea for a group, maybe you might be the only idea, the only person who has that idea, you might suggest something and it could be put out there and you could find other people are interested in the same thing. So, you know, there is loads that can be done um, and you all live in beautiful County Clare. So you have loads of beautiful walks and uh, although the wind did probably take you away the last couple of days. So maybe wait till the wind has died down a bit. But can I just say thank you to all of our panelists. Thank you so much. Um, it's so informative. I think we could have like another 10 of these and we still wouldn't get through everything that's available, which is fantastic because it really just highlights everything. Um, so thank you, Sharon, James Benley, James Murray, he, Mary and Mike O'Neill. Um, it's been a great webinar. And just to tell everybody, we will be um, sending out all the information about the different panelists that attended. Um, and um, just to tell you what's coming up with Midwest Aries as well. Let me just get my screens ready here now. Hold on to share my own screen as well. Um, and just to let you know that, um, you know, Midwest Aries has more stuff coming up, uh, as always do. They have stuff every month. Um, you could check out uh, their workshops on midwestareas.eventbrite.ie, but uh, their contact details will be sent out to you as well. So if you want to phone or email, you can. Um, they always have a, a, a big selection of workshops throughout the month, uh, every month. Um, and the, uh, the webinar at the end of March, the webinar is held on the last Wednesday of every month from two to three. Um, and the webinar next month will be living well with mental health challenges and they will have some peers on there who, um, who themselves will share their own experiences of living well. Um, you can listen to the, this will be turned into a podcast and all previous webinars are available on podcasts as well on anchor.fm. Um, and you can also look it up on YouTube. Midwest Aries have a YouTube page and you can see all the previous webinars and this webinar will be available there as well. Um, and this is our, the contact details for myself. As I said, I work for Mental Health Ireland. I'm the development officer. If you think that I can offer you support or information in any way, do reach out. Um, as all of us have said, if I don't have the information, I can find someone who does. Um, and thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Um, so that's it, guys. Any other final thoughts, comments, sir? No? Yeah, and, and I suppose just maybe even do a quick round of as, as a good boy is kind of like maybe the top tip, you know, for, you know, what do we do? And I suppose for me, while, yeah, I'm sitting here in Limerick, it's where my office is based and, uh, and I live here. 
But County Clare to me is, and particularly the Bourne and down at the coast, I describe it as my spiritual home. <laughs> Just being present, you know, getting out in nature, walking, the coastline it's a magical landscape and i find just by being present alone that will enhance my well-being so you have it you have to as far as i, I know. concerned the best county in ireland the landscape over. is amazing it's just yeah. that landscape get out and enjoy it and you know nourish your spirit soul your core whatever you describe exactly that. so thanks Claire. that's my top tip anyway oh, very good sharon have you a top tip for us well, thankfully, my three dogs have stayed very quiet throughout this uh, <laughs> webinar. But, but when I have three dogs, I don't have a choice. I have to get out. I have to walk and I have to hike. And that's been really good for me. But what I've it, and it's come from everybody here today is learning. I've kind of I've learned so much uh, since I joined Ennis Mental Health Association because of all the different approaches that you can take to looking after your mental health. It's it's not a one size fits all. There's no one clue. It's a multitude. So I just keep learning everything I can. Yeah. Give me the information and i'll keep learning that's how i do it thanks Sharon. and pets are a great source right not uh, when they're quiet <laughs> no yeah yeah i know only when they're quiet james james fenley tell us what's your top tip or what do you do for yourself maybe probably something similar to sharon there's a lot of dogs so i suppose it would tie in with i suppose being active and getting out of white shed into the fresh air and the sea air uh yeah it can it, it suits the soul and the body and a uh, very simple thing but i'd always be conscious that some people might not be able to get that physical exercise and mary in the frc yeah. would have grown chair yoga and things like that so you know people have limitations and people with disabilities but you know it's to walk around as best you can and maybe push the body a little bit you yeah. might not enjoy it while you're doing it <laughs> but uh, you will enjoy you certainly don't enjoy say that, that james <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's afterwards when the endorphins are released. I know, happens, yeah, I know. That's where you get the benefit. So push yourself a little bit. Perfect. Thank you so much, James. James Murray, what's your top tip? Well, I, I know that it, um, Sharon and James about physical activity. I would say for me, it's around networking. You know, um, you the different organisations and different people that you meet, you will get so many... Um, you know, or so much information off them, them in the right way. And I suppose, I suppose to to, to in, endorse what James, um, is to set your own. Targets. You know, um, I mentioned couch to five k, couch to one k could be a target for a person. You know, couch five hundred meters. Yeah. Um. So it's really about what you want to do yourself, and you know, reaching your targets. Nobody's going to be, you know, a new Saint Bolt or a or a Tony Kelly. Yeah. Um. But 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 at, but at the end of the day, it's about what what makes you feel happy, you know, and comfortable in yourself. Perfect. Thanks, James. Yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Mary, last but not least. Last but not least, your top tip? my top tip. I love this one now, and actually, maybe people can 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 relate to us. It. It's um, doing physical activity is actually went off the cards for me in about the last seven to eight years due to condition uh, that I developed, and I missed it, missed walking. I hear everyone saying, go out. I love the fresh air. I would live outside if I could. Um, I took up crochet. <laughs> very nice. I never in my life had the patience for it. Thought I tried it. I remember my 20s and my 30s. No way. Never had the patience for it. Now I'm producing lovely pieces of, 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 of blankets and everybody oh. in the family got an Afghan and, or, you know, big blankets. And I found, find it wonderful. And it's, it's actually very mindful. Uh, yeah. because you have to count you know and it's repetitive and everything and I think sometimes when you feel you can't do something physically you can get very down in it and, and I can relate to that and what it did was it allowed me to produce something yes. and I actually didn't feel useless yes, yeah. <laughs> by my inability to be active um, but definitely what Jane says the likes of chair yoga and even sit fit and uh well, one thing that'll keep you active is having a 14 year old daughter. So, uh, <laughs> and we have ring board and table tennis indoors and a few little things like that, that you can actually adapt. Fantastic. So that's what I do. <laughs> that's amazing. That's amazing. For me, I love a good story. So whether it's someone telling me a story that I'm watching a story on telly or I'm watching a movie or I'm reading a book or whatever, but I have, I have so many things that I have going on, but I just love a good story, do you know? So going to the movies at times and stuff like that can be a treat for me and, 
I know I should go out walking more. I don't. But the other thing that I do regularly or try to anyway is I go to the gym. I discovered weightlifting a couple of years ago. And I just, it's one of those things, James, that sometimes I, it makes me get up out of the bed and I still get in and I go. When I'm getting in, I'm like, oh my God, it's like 10 to 8 in the morning. What am I doing in my stupid car? But then <laughs> at nine o'clock when I'm done, I'm like, no, I'm glad I did that. Now I'm really glad I did that. But that's, a, that's all of us. So hopefully everyone got some tips there. Thanks again, everybody. And thank everybody to all our attendees as well. Um, and uh, we'll send you out all the details later. Thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, everybody.